Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to capture a scheduled API workflow's ID number um, whenever you're scheduling an API workflow on an individual item or on a list of things, Bubble will generate these IDs for each of those scheduled items so that you can um, look them up a little bit easier here in the scheduler section, but also to cancel that event via workflow. So if you go to your log section and then your scheduler uh, tab here, anything that you've scheduled is placed in this queue. It'll give you a time and date for when you've scheduled it. You'll see the ID and then of course you'll see any relevant parameters uh, involving that event, the API workflow itself, the endpoint name there. Um, and if you passed any parameters, whoever triggered it, the user uh, unique ID will show up there. Um, and then we have this cancel button and this is where you can manually cancel um, these scheduled events but there might be um, a scenario where you want to have them canceled via workflow so that your users can actually trigger that uh, action and because only you can access this here as the owner of the application so how do we retrieve this id that bubble generates for us for each of our scheduled items so i have in my um, workflow here i just have a blank test page with a simple button here this button schedules an api workflow um, i've just got a test endpoint in my api workflow section called reminders and i've set it to be scheduled for two days from now um, doesn't really matter what the workflow is at the moment all we're looking at right now is the id of this scheduled event so once this is uh, triggered, you can the, the, the result of this action is that ID number. So I can, for example, make a change to, um, I have, let's see, the current user, and I have a field here for app ID. And you do wanna make sure that you are saving this as a text and not a number, even though you, know, you are seeing numbers here. Uh, the value is a text that uh, Bubble's gonna want for that cancel action. So app ID equals, result of step one, which is the scheduling workflow, and that's it. This is uh, gonna be that ID number. I'm gonna do one more thing here and just show a quick little alert message to make sure we clicked the button, okay, and also, so we'll show that alert message. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add a text element here to display that ID, current users API ID. Uh, and this should just be that text value. All right, so I'm going to refresh this page. Um, I'm running as a user right now, and I believe, yep, this field is currently empty. So running this action will save that ID number to this field. We should also see it on the page here, and we're gonna take a look at the scheduler view uh, to cross-reference it. So I'll click that button, okay, and we can see the number just showed up. That means that the event was scheduled and this is the ID for it. If I go back to my database, let me just refresh the data here. There's the number 254. If I go to my scheduler view and we'll show my uh, scheduled events here, I can see that 254 is scheduled there, uh, triggered by this user. So we're all good. So now if I want to cancel this scheduled event, let me grab another button here and we'll do cancel scheduled API workflow. This button is going to run a different action under custom events, cancel a scheduled API workflow. Okay, all this needs is that API ID. So I could insert it via the saved field current users API ID, or if I have an input uh, element and have somebody type in a number, I mean, that's fine too. You just need to have the ID stored somewhere and saved or accessible or known so that you can insert it in this value here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, actually, let me show my alert message just to make sure I clicked it. All right, I'm gonna refresh the page and then I'm gonna cancel event 254 and it should be gone from the scheduler list here. Right now it's there. So I'll cancel, okay. Now I'm going to refresh this and we can see that 254 is missing. So we've canceled it successfully. So the process for doing this on a list of items is very, very similar. You're just working with a list of text values rather than one single value. So if I were to schedule a workflow on a list of things, let me delete all of these items here. We'll leave my alert message. So the action I'm gonna run is schedule an API workflow on a list. Uh, let's say I do it on a list of users and I'm just gonna search for, 
you know, the first five users or so like that just for demonstration. And then we'll run my same sample endpoint here called reminder and we'll do current date just sometime in the future, five days from now. All right. Uh, so now the result of this is not a single text value, but now it's a list value. So if I have, um, all I need is a text field in my database to store this list, but it's gotta be a list value. So if I go into my data structure, so when you're creating a field to store these IDs in a list format, um, we'll do list of API IDs and this will be a text, not a list of numbers, and just gotta make sure that this is checked so that it stores a list of values. Okay, so we'll create that, and um, we'll go over back to the workflows. So here I can make a change to the current user, and now I'll grab my list of API IDs, and I'm going to add the list of IDs that are generated from this action. Remember, this action is running it on a list, not just one single thing. So the result of that uh, action will give you that exact list, and that's all you need to do. So let's test this out. All right, I'm gonna schedule this workflow. This I've changed it now to store a list. So let's go look at our database. And I can see here that my list of API IDs field has stored five IDs because remember I ran that action on uh, the first five users over here. The list to run on was on a search for users and I just took the first five. So there's only gonna generate five scheduled events, right? And there are my five IDs. And if I go into logs and scheduler and refresh this, I can see the new five here. This was, let's see, 255 through 259. So that's these five at the last, the last ones here. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for watching.